The Game of Logic by Lewis Carroll Chapter 1, Part 1 Propositions New Lamps for Old Light Come, Light Go 1. Propositions Some new cakes are nice. No new cakes are nice. All new cakes are nice. There are three propositions for you, the only three kinds we are going to use in this game, and the first thing to be done is to learn how to express them on the board. Let us begin with, some new cakes are nice. But before doing so, a remark has to be made, one that is rather important, and by no means easy to understand all in a moment. So please, to read this very carefully. The world contains many things, such as buns, babies, beetles, battle doors, etc. And these things possess many attributes, such as baked, beautiful, black, broken, etc. In fact, whatever can be attributed to, that is, said to belong to, anything is an attribute. Whenever we wish to mention a thing, we use a substantive. When we wish to mention an attribute, we use an adjective. People have asked the question, can a thing exist without any attributes belonging to it? It is a very puzzling question, and I'm not going to try to answer it. Let us turn up our noses and treat it with contemptuous silence, as if it really wasn't worth noticing. But, if they put it the other way and ask, can an attribute exist without any thing for it to belong to? We may say at once, no, no more than a baby could go a railway journey with no one to take care of it. You never saw beautiful floating about in the air or littered about on the floor without any thing to be beautiful, now did you? And now, what am I driving at in all this long rigmarole? It is this. You may put is or are between names of two things. For example, some pigs are fat animals, or between the names of two attributes. For example, pink is light red. And in each case, it would make good sense. But if you put is or are between the name of a thing and the name of an attribute, for example, some pigs are pink, you do not make good sense. For how can a thing be an attribute? Unless you have an understanding with the person to whom you are speaking. And the simplest understanding would, I think, be this, that the substantive shall be supposed to be repeated at the end of the sentence, so that the sentence, if written out in full, would be, some pigs are pink pigs, and now the word are makes quite good sense. Thus, in order to make good sense of the proposition, some new cakes are nice, we must suppose it to be written out in full in the form, some new cakes are nice cakes. Now, this contains two terms, New cakes being one of them, and nice cakes the other. New cakes being the one we are talking about is called the subject of the proposition, and nice cakes the predicate. Also, this proposition is said to be a particular one, since it does not speak of the whole of its subject, but only of a part of it. The other two kinds are said to be universal, because they speak of the whole of their subjects, the one denying niceness and the other asserting it, of the whole class of new cakes. Lastly, if you would like to have a definition of the word proposition itself, you may take this. A sentence stating that some or none or all of the things belonging to a certain class called its subject are also things belonging to a certain other class called its predicate. You will find these seven words. Proposition, attribute, term, subject, predicate, Particular, universal, charmingly useful, if any friend should happen to ask if you have ever studied logic. Mind you, bring all seven words into your answer, and your friend will go away deeply impressed. Quote a sadder and wiser man. Now, please to look at the smaller diagram on the board and suppose it to be a cupboard, intended for all the cakes in the world. It would have to be a good large one, of course. And let us suppose all the new ones to be put into the upper half marked X, and all the rest, that is, the not new ones, into the lower half marked X prime. Thus, the lower half would contain elderly cakes, 
aged cakes, antediluvian cakes, if there are any, I haven't seen many myself, and so on. Let us also suppose all the nice cakes to be put into the left-hand half marked Y, and all the rest, that is, the not nice ones, into the right-hand half marked Y prime. At present, then, we must understand X to mean new, X prime not new, Y nice, and Y prime not nice. And now, what kind of cakes would you expect to find in compartment number five? It is part of the upper half, you see, so that if it has any cakes in it, they must be new. And it is part of the left-hand half, so that they must be nice. Hence, if there are any cakes in this compartment, they must have the double attribute new and nice. Or, if we use the letters, they must be XY. Observe that the letters X, Y are written on two of the edges of this compartment. You will find a very convenient rule for knowing what attributes belong to the things in any compartment. Take number seven, for instance. If there are any cakes there, they must be X prime Y. That is, they must be not new and nice. Now let us make another agreement that a red counter in a compartment shall mean that it is occupied. That is, that there are some cakes in it. The word sum, in logic, means one or more, so that a single cake in a compartment would be quite enough reason for saying there are some cakes here. Also, let us agree that a gray counter in a compartment shall mean that it is empty. That is, that there are no cakes in it. In the following diagrams, I shall put one, meaning one or more, where you are to put a red counter, and zero, meaning none, where you are to put a gray one. As the subject of our proposition is to be new cakes, we are only concerned at present with the upper half of the cupboard, where all the cakes have the attribute X, that is, new. Now, fixing our attention on this upper half, suppose we found it marked like this. That is, with a red counter in number 5. What would this tell us with regard to the class of new cakes? Would it not tell us that there are some of them in the XY compartment? That is, that some of them, besides having the attribute X, which belongs to both compartments, have the attribute Y, that is, nice. This we might express by saying, some X cakes are Y cakes, or putting words instead of letters, some new cakes are nice cakes, or in a shorter form, some new cakes are nice. At last, we have found out how to represent the first proposition of this section. If you have not clearly understood all I have said, go no further, but read it over and over again till you do understand it. After that is once mastered, you will find all the rest quite easy. It will save a little trouble in doing the other propositions if we agree to leave out the word cakes altogether. I find it convenient to call the whole class of things for which the cupboard is intended the universe. Thus, we might have begun this business by saying, let us take a universe of cakes. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Of course, any other things would have done just as well as cakes. We might make propositions about a universe of lizards, or even a universe of hornets. Wouldn't that be a charming universe to live in? So far, then, we have learned that the diagram means some X and Y, i.e., some new are nice. I think you will see without further explanation that this diagram means some X are Y, i.e. some new are not nice. Now let us put a gray counter into number 5 and ask ourselves the meaning of this diagram. This tells us that the XY compartment is empty, which we may express by no X are Y or no new cakes are nice. This is the second of the three propositions at the head of the section. In the same way, the following diagram would mean no X are Y or no new cakes are not nice. What would you make of this diagram, I wonder? I hope you will not have much trouble in making out that this represents a double proposition, namely, some X are Y and some are Y prime, that is, some new are nice and some are not nice. The following is a little harder, perhaps. This diagram means no X are Y and none are Y prime, i.e., no new are nice, and none are not nice, which leads to the rather curious result that no new exists, i.e., no cakes are new. This is because nice and not nice 
make what we call an exhaustive division of the class new cakes, i.e. between them, they exhaust the whole class, so that all the new cakes that exist must be found in one or the other of them. And now suppose you had to represent with counters the contradictory to no cakes are new, which would be some cakes are new, or putting letters for words, some cakes are X. How would you do it? This will puzzle you a little, I expect. Evidently, you must put a red counter somewhere in the X half of the cupboard, since you know there are some new cakes, but you must not put it into the left-hand compartment, since you do not know them to be nice, nor may you put it into the right-hand one, since you do not know them to be not nice. What, then, are you to do? I think the best way out of the difficulty is to place the red counter on the division line between the XY compartment and the X. Y prime compartment. This I shall represent as I always put one where you are to put a red counter by the diagram below. Our ingenious American cousins have invented a phrase to express the position of a man who wants to join one or the other of two parties, such as their two parties, Democrats and Republicans, but can't make up his mind which. Such a man is said to be sitting on the fence. Now that is exactly the position of the red counter you have just placed on the division line. He likes the look of number five, and he likes the look of number six, and he does not know which to jump down into. So there he sits astride, silly fellow, dangling his legs, one on each side of the fence. Now I am going to give you a much harder one to make out. What does this diagram mean? This is clearly a double proposition. It tells us not only that some x are y, but also that no x are not y. Hence the result is, all x are y, i.e. all new cakes are nice, which is the last of the three propositions at the head of this section. We see, then, that the universal proposition, all new cakes are nice, consists of two propositions taken together, namely, some new cakes are nice and no new cakes are not nice. In the same way, the diagram below would mean all x are y prime, that is, all new cakes are not nice. Now, what would you make of such a proposition as the cake you have given me is nice? Is it particular or universal? Particular, of course, you readily reply. One single cake is hardly worth calling some even. No, my dear impulsive reader, it is universal. Remember that few as they are, And I grant you, they couldn't be fewer. They are, or rather, it is. All that you have given me, thus, if leaving red out of the question, I divide my universe of cakes into two classes, the cakes you have given me, to which I assign the upper half of the cupboard, and those you haven't given me, which are to go below, I find the lower half fairly full, and the upper one as nearly as possible empty. And then... When I am told to put an upright division into each half, keeping the nice cakes to the left and the not nice ones to the right, I begin by carefully collecting all the cakes you have given me, saying to myself from time to time, Generous creature, how shall I ever repay such kindness? And piling them up in the left-hand compartment. And it doesn't take long to do it. Here is another universal proposition for you. Barzillai... Bekeleg is an honest man. That means all the Basilei Bekelegs that I am now considering are honest men. You think I invented that name now, don't you? But I didn't. Is on a carrier's cart somewhere down in Cornwall. This kind of universal proposition, where the subject is a single thing, is called an individual proposition. Now let us take nice cakes as the subject of proposition that is, let us fix our thoughts on the left-hand half of the cupboard, where all the cakes have attribute Y, that is, nice. Suppose we find it marked like this. What would that tell us? I hope that it is not necessary, after explaining the horizontal oblong so fully, to spend so much time over the upright one. I hope you will see for yourself that this means some Y are X. That is, some nice cakes are new. But, you will say... We have had this case before. You put a red counter into number five, and you told us it meant some new cakes are nice, and now you tell us that it means some nice cakes are new. Can it mean both? 
The question is a very thoughtful one, and does you great credit, dear reader? It does mean both. If you choose to take X, that is, new cakes, as your subject, and to regard number five as part of a horizontal oblong, you may read it some X are Y, that is, some new cakes are nice. But if you choose to take Y, that is, nice cake, as your subject, and to regard number five as part of the upright oblong, then you may read it some Y are X, that is, some nice cakes are new. They are merely two different ways of expressing the very same truth. Without more words, I will simply set down the other ways in which this upright oblong might be marked, adding the meaning in each case. By comparing them with the various cases of the horizontal oblong, you will, I hope, be able to understand them clearly. You will find it a good plan to examine yourself on this table by covering up first one column, then the other, and dodging about, as the children say. Also, you will do well to write out for yourself two other tables, one for the lower half of the cupboard and the other for its right-hand half. And now I think we have said all we need to say about the smaller diagram, and may go on to the larger one. Below is a table of symbols and meanings. Symbol 1. Some y are x prime, that is, some nice are not new. Symbol 2. No y are x, that is, no nice are new. Observe that this is merely another way of expressing no new are nice. Symbol 3. No y are x prime, that is, no nice are not new. Symbol 4, some y are x and some are x prime. That is, some nice are new and some are not new. Symbol 4, no y are x and none are x prime. That is, no y exist. That is, no cakes are nice. Symbol number 5, all y are x. That is, all nice are new. Symbol 6, all Y are X, that is, all nice, are not new. This may be taken to be a cupboard divided in the same way as the last, but also divided into two portions for the attribute M. Let us give to M the meaning wholesome. And let us suppose that all wholesome cakes are placed inside the central square and all the unwholesome ones outside it, that is, in one or other of the four queer-shaped outer compartments. We see that, just as in the smaller diagram the cakes in each compartment had two attributes, so here the cakes in each compartment have three attributes. And just as the letters representing the two attributes were written on the edges of the compartment, so here they are written at the corners. Observe that M prime is supposed to be written in each of the four outer corners, so that we can tell in a moment, by looking at a compartment, what three attributes belong to the things in it. For instance, take number 12. Here we find x, y prime, m at the corners. So we know that the cakes in it, if there are any, have the triple attribute x, y prime, m. That is, new, not nice, and wholesome. Again, take number 16. Here we find at the corners x prime, y prime, m prime. So the cakes in it are not new, not nice, and unwholesome remarkably untempting cakes. It would take far too long to go through all the propositions containing X and Y, X and M, and Y and M, which can be represented on this diagram. There are 96 altogether, so I am sure you will excuse me, and I must content myself with doing two or three as specimens. You will do well to work out a lot more for yourself. Taking the upper half by itself so that our subject is new cakes... How are we to represent no new cakes are wholesome? This is writing letters for words. No X are M. Now this tells us that none of the cakes belonging to the upper half of the cupboard are to be found inside the central square. That is, the two compartments number 11 and 12 are empty. And this, of course, is represented by the following diagram. And now, how are we to represent the contradictory position some x are m? This is a difficulty I have already considered. I think the best way is to place a red counter on the division line between number 11 and number 12, and to understand this to mean that one of the two compartments is occupied, but that we do not at present know which. This I shall represent thus, 
in the following diagram. Now let us express all x are m. This consists, we know, of two propositions. Some x are m and no x are m. Let us express the negative part first. This tells us that none of the cakes belonging to the upper half of the cupboard are to be found outside the central square. That is, the two compartments, number 9 and number 10, are empty. This, of course, is represented by the following diagram. But we have yet to represent some x are m. This tells us that there are some cakes in the oblong consisting of number 11 and number 12, so we place our red counter, as in the previous example, on the division line between number 11 and number 12, and the result is the following diagram. Now let us try one or two interpretations. What are we to make of this diagram with regard to x and y? This tells us, with regard to the x y prime square, that it is wholly empty, since both compartments are so marked. With regard to the x y square, it tells us that it is occupied. True, it is only one compartment of it that is so marked, but that is quite enough whether the other be occupied or empty, to settle the fact that there is something in the square. If then we transfer our marks to the smaller diagram so as to get rid of the m subdivisions, we have a right to mark it thus in the following diagram, which means you know all x are y. The result would have been exactly the same if the given oblong had been marked thus, as in the following diagram. Once more, how shall we interpret this diagram with regard to x and y? This tells us, as to the xy square, that one of its compartments is empty. But this information is quite useless, as there is no mark in the other compartment. If the other compartment happened to be empty too, the square would be empty, and if it happened to be occupied, the square would be occupied. So, as we do not know which is the case, we can say nothing about this square. The other square, the xy prime square, we know, as in the previous example, to be occupied. If then we transfer our marks to the smaller diagram, we get merely this diagram, which means you know some x are y prime. These principles may be applied to all the other oblongs. For instance, to represent all y prime are m prime, we should mark the right-hand upright oblong, the one that has the attribute y prime, thus, as in the following diagram. And if we were told to interpret the lower half of the cupboard, marked as follows with regard to x and y, as in the following diagram, we should transfer it to the smaller diagram thus. And read this diagram, all x prime are y. Two more remarks about the propositions need to be made. One is that in every proposition, beginning with some or all, the actual existence of the subject is asserted. If, for instance, I say all misers are selfish, I mean that misers actually exist. If I wish to avoid making this assertion and merely to state the law that miserliness necessarily involves selfishness, I should say no misers are unselfish which does not assert that any misers exist at all, but merely that if any did exist, they would be selfish. The other is that when a proposition begins with some or no, and contains more than two attributes, these attributes may be rearranged and shifted from one term to the other ad libitum. For example, some ABC are DEF may be rearranged as some BF are ACDE each being equivalent to some things are A, B, C, D, E, F. Again, no wise old men are rash and reckless gamblers, may be rearranged as no rash old gamblers are wise and reckless, each being equivalent to no men are wise old rash reckless gamblers. End of chapter. The Game of Logic by Lewis Carroll. Chapter 1, Part 2. Syllogisms. Now suppose we divide our universe of things in three ways with regard to three different attributes. Out of these three attributes, we may make up three different couples. For instance, if they were A, B, C, we might make up three couples, A, B, A, C, B, C. Also suppose we have two propositions given us containing two of these three couples, 
and that from them we can prove a third proposition containing the third couple. For example, if we divide our universe for m, x, and y, and we have the two propositions given us, no m are x, and all m prime are y, containing the two couples m, x, and m, y, it might be possible to prove from them a third proposition containing x and y. In such a case, we call the given propositions the premises, the third one, the conclusion, and the whole set, a syllogism. Evidently, one of the attributes must occur in both premises, or else one must occur in one premise, and it's contradictory in the other. In the first case, when, for example, the premises are some m are x and no m are y, prime, the term, which occurs twice, is called the middle term, because it serves as a sort of link between the other two terms. In the second case, when, for example, the premises are no m are x prime and all m prime are y, the two terms, which contain these contradictory attributes, may be called the middle terms. Thus, in the first case, the class of m things is the middle term, and in the second case, the two classes of m things and m prime things are the middle terms. The attribute, which occurs in the middle term or terms, disappears in the conclusion, and it is said to be eliminated, which literally means turned out of doors. Now let us try to draw a conclusion from the two premises. Some new cakes are unwholesome. No nice cakes are unwholesome. In order to express them with counters, we need to divide cakes in three different ways with regard to newness, to niceness, and to wholesomeness. For this, we must use the larger diagram, making x mean new, y nice, and m wholesome. Everything inside the central square is supposed to have the attribute m, and everything outside it the attribute m prime, i.e., not m. You had better adopt a rule to make m mean the attribute which occurs in the middle term or terms. I have chosen m as the symbol because middle begins with m. Now, in representing the two premises, I prefer to begin with the negative one, the one beginning with no, because gray counters can always be placed with certainty, and will then help to fix the position of the red counters, which are sometimes a little uncertain, where they will be most welcome. Let us express the no nice cakes are unwholesome cakes, i.e. no y cakes are m prime cakes. This tells us that none of the cakes belonging to the y half of the cupboard are in its m prime compartments, that is, the ones outside the central square. Hence, the two compartments, number 9 and number 15, are both empty, and we must place a gray counter in each of them, thus, as shown in the diagram. We have now to express the other premise, namely, some new cakes are unwholesome cakes, that is, some X cakes are M prime cakes. This tells us that some of the cakes in the X half of the cupboard are in its M prime compartments. Hence, one of the two compartments, number 9 and number 10, is occupied, and as we are not told in which of these two compartments to place the red counter, the usual rule would be to lay it on the division line between them. But, in this case, the other premise has settled the matter for us by declaring number 9 to be empty. Hence, the red counter has no choice and must go into number 10, thus as in the following diagram. And now, what counters will this information enable us to place in the smaller diagram as to get some proposition involving x and y only, leaving out m? Let us take its four compartments one by one. First, number five. All we know about this is that its outer portion is empty, but we know nothing about its inner portion. Thus, the square may be empty or may have something in it. Who can tell? So we dare not place any counter in this square. Secondly, what of number six? Here we are a little better off. We know that there is something in it, for there is a red counter in its outer portion. It is true we do not know whether its inner portion is empty or occupied, but what does that matter? One solitary cake in one corner of the square is quite sufficient excuse for saying this square is occupied, and for marking it with a red counter. 
As for number seven, we are in the same condition as with number five. We find it partly empty, but we do not know whether the other part is empty or occupied, so we dare not mark this square. And as to number eight, we have simply no information at all. The result is shown in the following diagram. Our conclusion, then, must be got out of the rather meager piece of information that there is a red counter in the x y prime square. Hence, our conclusion is some x are y prime. That is, some new cakes are not nice cakes. Or, if you prefer to take y prime as your subject, some not nice cakes are new cakes, but the other looks neatest. We will now write out the whole syllogism, putting the following symbol for therefore and omitting cakes for the sake of brevity at the end of each proposition. Some new cakes are unwholesome. No nice cakes are unwholesome. Therefore, some new cakes are not nice. And you have now worked out successfully your first syllogism. Permit me to congratulate you and to express the hope that it is but the beginning of a long and glorious series of similar victories. We will work out one other syllogism, a rather harder one than the last, and then I think you may be safely left to play the game by yourself, or better, with any friend whom you can find, that is able and willing to take a share in the sport. Let us see what we can make of the two premises. All dragons are uncanny. All Scotchmen are canny. Remember, I don't guarantee the premises to be facts. In the first place, I never even saw a dragon, and in the second place, it isn't of the slightest concurrence to us as logicians whether our premises are true or false. All we have to do is to make out whether they lead logically to the conclusion so that if they were true, it would also be true. You see, we must give up the cakes now, or our cupboard will be of no use to us. We must take as our universe some class of things which will include dragons and scotchmen, shall we say animals? And as canny is evidently the attribute belonging to the middle terms, we will let M stand for canny, X for dragons, and Y for scotchmen, so that our two premises are in full. All dragon animals are uncanny animals. All Scotchman animals are canny animals, and these may be expressed using letters for words thus, all X are M prime, all Y are M. The first premise consists, as you already know, of two parts, some X are M prime and no X are M, and the second also consists of two parts, some Y are M and no Y are M prime. Let us take the negative portions first. We have then to mark on the larger diagram below, first, no X are M, and secondly, no Y are M, prime. I think you will see, without further explanation, that the two results separately are, as shown, and that these two, when combined, give us the following diagram. We have now to mark the two positive portions, some X are M prime and some Y are M. The only two compartments available for things which are x m prime are number 9 and number 10. Of these, number 9 is already marked as empty, so our red counter must go into number 10. Similarly, the only two available for y m are number 11 and number 13. Of these, number 11 is already marked as empty, so our red counter must go into number 13. The final result is shown in the following diagram. And now how much of this information can usefully be transferred to the smaller diagram? Let us take its four compartments one by one. As to number five, this we see is wholly empty, so mark it with a gray counter. As to number six, this we see is occupied, so mark it with a red counter. As to number seven, ditto, ditto. As to number eight, no information. The smaller diagram is now pretty liberally marked as shown below. And now, what conclusion can we read off from this? Well, it is impossible to pack such abundant information into one proposition. We shall have to indulge in two this time. First, by taking x as subject, we get all x are y, that is, all dragons are not Scotchmen. Secondly, by taking y as subject, we get all y are x, that is, all Scotchmen are not dragons. 
Let us now write out altogether our two premises and our brace of conclusions. All dragons are uncanny. All Scotchmen are canny. Therefore, all dragons are not Scotchmen. All Scotchmen are not dragons. Let me mention in conclusion that you may perhaps meet with logical treatises in which it is not assumed that anything exists at all by some X R Y is understood to mean the attributes X Y are compatible so that a thing can have both at once, no X R Y to mean the attributes X Y are incompatible so that nothing can have both at once. In such treatises, propositions have quite different meanings from what they have in our game of logic, and it will be well to understand exactly what the difference is. First, take some X R Y. Here we understand R to mean R as an actual fact, which of course implies that some X things exist. But they, the writers of these other treatises, only understand R to mean can be, which does not at all imply that any exist. So they mean less than we do. Our meaning includes theirs, for of course some X R Y includes some X can be Y. But theirs does not include ours. For example, some Welsh hippopotami are heavy would be true, according to these writers, since the attributes Welsh and heavy are quite compatible in a hippopotamus. But it would be false in our game, since there are no Welsh hippopotami to be heavy. Secondly, take no X R Y. Here we understand R to mean R as an actual fact, which does not at all imply that no X can be Y. But they understand the proposition to mean not only that none are Y, but that none can possibly be Y. So they mean more than we do. Their meaning includes ours, for of course no X can be Y includes no X are Y, but ours does not include theirs. For example, no policemen are eight feet high would be true in our game, since, as an actual fact, no such splendid specimens are ever found. But it would be false, according to these writers, since the attributes belonging to the police force and eight feet high are quite compatible. There is nothing to prevent a policeman from growing to that height if sufficiently rubbed with Rollins' Macazar oil, which said to make hair grow when rubbed on hair, and so, of course, will make a policeman grow when rubbed on a policeman. Thirdly, take all X R Y, which consists of the two partial propositions some X R Y and no X R Y. Here, of course, the treatises mean less than we do in the first part and more than we do in the second. But the two operations don't balance each other any more than you can console a man for having knocked down one of his chimneys by giving him an extra doorstep. If you meet with syllogisms of this kind, you may work them quite easily by the system I have given you. You have only to make R mean R capable of being, and all will go smoothly. For some X R Y will become some X R capable of being Y. That is, the attributes X Y are compatible, and no X R Y will become no X R capable of being Y. That is, the attributes X Y are incompatible. And of course, all X R Y will become some X R capable of being Y, and none are capable of being Y prime. That is, the attributes X Y are compatible, and the attributes X Y prime are incompatible. By using the diagrams for this system, you must understand a red counter to mean there may possibly be something in this compartment, and a gray one to mean there cannot possibly be anything in this compartment. The Game of Logic by Lewis Carroll, Chapter 1, Part 3, Fallacies And so you think, do you, that the chief use of logic in real life is to deduce conclusions from workable premises? and to satisfy yourself that the conclusions deduced by other people are correct. I only wish it were. Society would be much less liable to panics and other delusions, and political life especially would be a totally different thing if even a majority of the arguments that scattered broadcast over the world were correct. But it is all the other way, I fear. For one workable pair of premises, I mean a pair that lead to a logical conclusion that you meet within your reading, your newspaper or magazine, you will probably find five that lead to no conclusion at all. And even when the premises are workable, for one instance, where the writer draws a correct conclusion, there are probably ten where he draws an incorrect one. In the first case, you may say the premises are fallacious. 
In the second, the conclusion is fallacious. The chief use you will find in such logical skill as this game may teach you will be in deleting fallacies of these two kinds. The first kind of fallacy, fallacious premises, you will detect when, after marking them on the larger diagram, you try to transfer the marks to the smaller. You will take its four compartments, one by one, and ask for each in turn, what mark can I place here? And in every one the answer will be, no information, showing that there is no conclusion at all. For instance, all soldiers are brave, some English are brave, and therefore some Englishmen are soldiers, looks uncommonly like a syllogism and might easily take in a less experienced logician. But you are not to be caught by such a trick. You would simply set out the premises and would then calmly remark, fallacious premises. You wouldn't condescend to ask what conclusion the writer professed to draw, knowing that whatever it is, it must be wrong. You would be just as safe as that wise mother was who said, Mary, just go up to the nursery and see what baby's doing, and tell him not to do it. The other kind of fallacy, fallacious conclusion, you will not detect till you have marked both diagrams, and have read off the correct conclusion, and have compared it with the conclusion which the writer has drawn. But... Mind that you wouldn't say fallacious conclusion simply because it is not identical with the correct one. It may be a part of the correct conclusion, and so be quite correct as far as it goes. In this case, you would merely remark with a pitying smile, defective conclusion. Suppose, for example, you were to meet with this syllogism. All unselfish people are generous. No misers are generous. And therefore, no misers are unselfish. The premises, of which might be thus expressed in letters all X prime are M, no Y are M. Here the correct conclusion will be all X prime are Y prime, that is, all unselfish people are not misers. While the conclusion drawn by the writer is no Y are X prime, which is the same as no X prime are Y. And so is part of all X prime are Y prime. Here you would simply say, defective conclusion. The same thing would happen if you were in a confectioner's shop, and if a little boy were to come in, put down two pence, and march off triumphantly with a single penny bun. You would shake your head mournfully and would remark, defective conclusion, poor little chap. And perhaps you would ask the young lady behind the counter whether she would let you eat the bun which the little boy had paid for and left behind him. And perhaps she would say, shan't. But if, in the above example, the writer had drawn the conclusion, all misers are selfish, that is, all YRX, this would be going beyond his legitimate rights, since it would assert the existence of Y which is not contained in the premises. And you would very properly say, fallacious conclusion. Now, when you read other treatises on logic, you will meet with various kinds of so-called fallacies, which are by no means always so. For example, if you were to put before one of these logicians the pair of premises, no honest men cheat, no dishonest men are trustworthy, and were to ask him what conclusion followed, he would probably say, none at all your premises offend against two distinct rules and are as fallacious as they can well be. Then suppose you were bold enough to say, the conclusion is, no men who cheat are trustworthy. I fear your logical friend would turn away hastily, perhaps angry, perhaps only scornful in any case. The result would be unpleasant. I advise you not to try the experiment. But why is this, you will say? Do you mean to tell us that all these logicians are wrong, Far from it, dear reader, from their point of view, they are perfectly right, but they do not include in their system anything like all the positive forms of syllogisms. They have a sort of nervous dread of attributes beginning with a negative particle. For example, such propositions as all not X are Y, no X are not Y, are quite outside their system, and thus, having from sheer nervousness excluded a quantity of very useful forms, they have made rules which though quite applicable to the few forms which they allow of, are no use at all when you consider all possible forms. 
Let us not quarrel with them, dear reader. There is room enough in the world for both of us. Let us quietly take our broader system, and if they choose to shut their eyes to all these useful forms and to say they are not syllogisms at all, we can but stand aside and let them rush upon their fate. There is scarcely anything of yours upon which it is so dangerous to rush as your fate. You may rush upon your potato beds or your strawberry beds without doing much harm. You may even rush upon your balcony, unless it is a new house built by contract, and with no clerk of the works, and may survive the foolhardly enterprise. But if you once rush upon your fate, why, you must take the consequences. The Game of Logic by Lewis Carroll Chapter 2. Cross Questions The man in the wilderness asked of me, How many strawberries grow in the sea? Part 1. Elementary Number one, what is an attribute? Give examples. Number two, when is it good sense to put is or are between two names? Give examples. Number three, when is it not good sense? Give examples. Number four, when it is not good sense, what is the simplest agreement to make in order to make good sense? Number five, explain proposition, term, subject, and predicate. Give examples. Number six. What are particular and universal propositions? Give examples. Number seven. Give a rule for knowing, when we look at the smaller diagram, what attributes belong to the things in each compartment. Number eight. What does sum mean in logic? See pages 55, 56. Number nine. In what sense do we use the word universe in this game? Number ten. What is a double proposition? Give examples. Number 11. When is a class of things said to be exhaustively divided? Give examples. Number 12. Explain the phrase sitting on the fence. Number 13. What two partial propositions make up when taken together? All X are Y. Number 14. What are individual propositions? Give examples. Number 15. What kinds of propositions imply, in this game, the existence of their subjects? Number 16. When a proposition contains more than two attributes, these attributes may, in some cases, be rearranged and shifted from one term to the other. In what cases may this be done? Give examples. Break up each of the following into two partial propositions. Number 17. All tigers are fierce. 18. All hard-boiled eggs are unwholesome. 19. I am happy. 20. John is not at home. See pages 56, 57, 21. Give a rule for knowing when we look at the larger diagram what attributes belong to the things contained in each compartment. Number 22. Explain premises, conclusion, and syllogism. Give examples. 23. Explain the phrases middle term and middle terms. 24. In marking a pair of premises on the larger diagram, why is it best to mark negative propositions before affirmative ones? 25. Why is it of no consequence to us as logicians whether the premises are true or false? 26. How can we work syllogisms in which we are told that some X are Y is to be understood to mean the attribute X, Y are compatible, and no X are Y to mean the attributes X, Y are incompatible? 27. What are the two kinds of fallacies? 28. How may we detect fallacious premises? 29. How may we detect a fallacious conclusion? 30. Sometimes the conclusion offered to us is not identical with the correct conclusion and yet cannot be fairly called fallacious. When does this happen, and what name may we give to such a conclusion? See pages 57 through 59. Part 2. Half of Smaller Diagram Propositions to be represented in the following diagram. 1. Some X are not Y. 2. All X are not Y. 
3. Some x are y and some are not y. 4. No x exist. 5. Some x exist. 6. No x are not y. 7. Some x are not y and some x exist. In the following problems, taking x equals judges, y equals just. Number 8. No judges are just. Number 9. Some judges are unjust. Number 10. All judges are just. In the following problems, x equals plums, y equals wholesome. 11. Some plums are wholesome. 12. There are no wholesome plums. 13. Plums are some of them wholesome and some not. 14. All plums are unwholesome. See pages 59 through 60. In the following problems, y equals diligent students, x equals successful. 15. No diligent students are unsuccessful. 16. All diligent students are successful. 17. No students are diligent. 18. There are some diligent but unsuccessful students. 19. Some students are diligent. See pages 60 through 61. Part 3. Half of smaller diagram. Symbols to be interpreted. Problems 1 through 4 using the following diagram. Problems 5 through 8. X equals good riddles. Y equals hard. See pages 61 through 62. Problems 9 through 12. X equals lobster. Y equals selfish. Problems 13 through 16, using the following diagram. Y equals healthy people. X equals happy. See page 62. Part 4. Smaller diagram. Propositions to be represented using the following diagram. 1. All are X. 2. Some Y are not X. 3. No not X are not Y. 4. Some X are not Y. 5. Some not Y are X. 6. No not X are Y. 7. Some not X are not Y. 8. All not X are not Y. 9. Some not Y exist. 10. No not X exist. 11. Some Y are X and some are not X. 12. All X are Y and all are not Y are not X. See pages 62 through 63. Taking nations as universe, X equals civilized, Y equals warlike, for problems 13 through 17. 13. No civilized nation is warlike. 14. All unwarlike nations are uncivilized. 15. Some nations are unwarlike. 16. All warlike nations are civilized and all civilized nations are warlike. 17. No nation is uncivilized. In problems 18 through 23, taking crocodiles as universe, X equals hungry and Y equals amiable. 18. All hungry crocodiles are unamiable. 19. No crocodiles are amiable when hungry. 20. Some crocodiles, when not hungry, are amiable, but some are not. 21. No crocodiles are amiable, and some are hungry. 22. All crocodiles, when not hungry, are amiable, and all unamiable crocodiles are hungry. 23. Some hungry crocodiles are amiable, and some that are not hungry are unamiable. See pages 63 through 64. Part 5. Smaller Diagram. Symbols to be interpreted on the following diagram. Problems 1 through 4. In problems 5 through 8, taking houses as universe, x equals built of brick, 
and y equals 2 storied. Please interpret. See page 65. Taking boys as universe, x equals fat and y equals active, please interpret in problems 9 through 12. Taking cats as universe, x equals green-eyed and y good-tempered, interpret in problems 13 through 16, see pages 65 through 66. Part 6. Larger Diagram. Propositions to be represented in the following diagram. Number 1. No x are m. 2. Some y are m prime. 3. All m are x prime. 4. No m prime are y prime. 5. No m are x. All y are m. 6. Some x are m. No y are m. 7. All m are x prime. No m are y. 8. No x prime are m. No y prime are m prime. See pages 67 through 68. Taking rabbits as universe, m equals greedy, x equals old, and y equals black. Represent, in problem 9, no old rabbits are greedy. 10. Some not greedy rabbits are black. 11. All white rabbits are free from greediness. 12. All greedy rabbits are young. 13. No old rabbits are greedy. All black rabbits are greedy. 14. All rabbits that are not greedy are black. No old rabbits are free from greediness. Taking birds as universe. M equals that sing loud. X equals well fed. Y equals happy. Represent in problem 15. All well-fed birds sing loud. No birds that sing loud are unhappy. 16. All birds that do not sing loud are unhappy. No well-fed birds fail to sing loud. Taking persons as universe, M equals in the house, X equals John, and Y equals having a toothache. Represent in problem 17. John is in the house. Everybody in the house is suffering from toothache. 18. There is no one in the house but John. Nobody out of the house has a toothache. See pages 68 through 70. Taking persons as universe, M equals I. X equals that has taken a walk. Y equals that feels better. Represent in problem 19. I have been out for a walk. I feel much better. Choosing your own universe, etc. Represent. 20. I sent him to bring me a kitten. He brought me a kettle by mistake. See pages 70 through 71. Part 7. Both diagrams to be employed. NB. In each question, a small diagram should be drawn for X and Y only and marked in accordance with the given large diagram, and then as many propositions as possible for X and Y should be read off from this small diagram. For problems 1 through 4, see pages 72. For problems 5 through 12, mark in a large diagram the following pairs of propositions from the preceding section, then mark a small diagram in accordance with it, etc. Mark on a large diagram the following pairs of propositions, then mark a small diagram, etc. These are, in fact, Pairs of premises for syllogisms, and the results read off from the small diagram, are the conclusions. 13. No exciting books suit feverish patients. Unexciting books make one drowsy. 14. Some who deserve the fair get their deserts. None but the brave deserve the fair. 15. No children are patient. No impatient person can sit still. See pages 72 through 75. 16. All pigs are fat. No skeletons are fat. 17. No monkeys are soldiers. All monkeys are mischievous. 18. None of my cousins are just. No judges are unjust. 19. Some days are rainy. Rainy days are tiresome. 20. All medicine is nasty. Senna is a medicine. 21. Some Jews are rich. All Patagonians are Gentiles. 22. All teetotalers like sugar. No nightingale drinks wine. 23. No muffins are wholesome. 
All buns are unwholesome. 24. No fat creatures run well. Some greyhounds run well. 25. All soldiers march. Some youths are not soldiers. 26. Sugar is sweet. Salt is not sweet. 27. Some eggs are hard-boiled. No eggs are uncrackable. 28. There are no Jews in the house. There are no Gentiles in the garden. See pages 75 through 82. 29. All battles are noisy. What makes no noise may escape notice. 30. No Jews are mad. All rabbis are Jews. 31. There are no fish that cannot swim. Some skates are fish. 32. All passionate people are unreasonable. Some orators are passionate. See pages 82. The Game of Logic by Lewis Carroll. Chapter 3. Crooked Answers. I answered him as I thought good, as many as red herrings grow in the wood. Part 1. Elementary. Number 1. Whatever can be attributed to, that is, said to belong to a thing, is called an attribute. For example, baked, which can frequently be attributed to buns, and beautiful, which can seldom be attributed to babies. Number two, when there are names of two things, for example, these pigs are fat animals, or of two attributes, for example, pink is light red. Three, when one is the name of a thing, and the other is the name of an attribute, for example, these pigs are pink, since a thing cannot actually be an attribute. Four, that the substantive shall be supposed to be repeated at the end of the sentence. For example, these pigs are pink pigs. 5. A proposition is a sentence stating that some or none or all of the things belonging to a certain class called the subject are also things belonging to a certain other class called the predicate. For example, some new cakes are not nice. That is written in full. Some new cakes are not nice cakes, where the class new cakes is the subject, and the class not nice cakes is the predicate. 6. A proposition stating that some of the things belonging to its subject are so-and-so is called particular. For example, some new cakes are nice, some new cakes are not nice. A proposition stating that none of the things belonging to its subject, or that all of them are so-and-so, is called universal. For example, no new cakes are nice, all new cakes are not nice. 7. The things in each compartment possess two attributes whose symbols will be found written on two of the edges of that compartment. 8. One or more. 9. As a name of the class of things to which the whole diagram is assigned. 10. A proposition containing two statements, for example, some new cakes are nice and some are not nice. 11. When the whole class thus divided is exhausted among the sets into which it is divided, there being no member of it which does not belong to some one of them. For example, the class New Cakes is exhaustively divided into nice and not nice, since every new cake must be one or the other. 12. When a man cannot make up his mind which of two parties he will join, he is said to be sitting on the fence, not being able to decide on which side he will jump down. 13. Some X are Y, and no X are Y. 14. A proposition whose subject is a single thing is called individual. For example, I am happy. John is not at home. These are universal propositions, being the same as all the I's that exist are happy. All the Johns that I am now considering are not at home. 15. Propositions beginning with some or all. 16. When they begin with some or no, for example, some A, B, C, R, D, E, F may be rearranged as some B, F, R, A, C, D, E, each being equivalent to some A, B, C, D, E, F exist. 17. Some tigers are fierce. No tigers are not fierce. 18. Some hard-boiled eggs are unwholesome. No hard-boiled eggs are wholesome. 19. Some eyes are happy. No eyes are unhappy. 20. Some Johns are not at home. No Johns are at home. 21. The things in each compartment of the larger diagram possess three attributes, whose symbols will be found written at three of the corners of the compartment, except, in the case of M', prime, 
which is not actually inserted in the diagram, but is supposed to stand at each of its outer four corners. 22. If the universe of things be divided with regard to three different attributes, and if two propositions be given containing two different couples of these attributes, and if from these we can prove a third proposition containing the two attributes that have not yet occurred together, the given propositions are called the premises, the third one the conclusion, and the whole set a syllogism. For example, the premises might be no M are X and all M prime are Y and it might be possible to prove from them a conclusion containing x and y. 23. If an attribute occurs in both premises, the term containing it is called the middle term. For example, if the premises are some m are x and no m are y prime, the class of m things is the middle term. If an attribute occurs in one premise, and it's contrary in the other, the terms containing them may be called the middle terms. For example, if the premises are no M are X prime and all M prime are Y, the two classes of M things and M prime things may be called the middle terms. 24. Because they can be marked with certainty, whereas affirmative propositions, that is, those that begin with some or all, sometimes require us to place a red counter sitting on a fence. 25. Because the only question we are concerned with is whether the conclusion follows logically from the premises so that if they were true, it would also be true. 26. By understanding a red counter to mean this compartment can be occupied and a gray one to mean this compartment cannot be occupied or this compartment must be empty. 27. Fallacious premises and fallacious conclusion. 28. By finding, when we try to transfer marks from the larger diagram to the smaller, that there is no information for any of its four compartments. 29. By finding the correct conclusion, and then observing that the conclusion offered to us is neither identical with it nor a part of it. Number 30. When the offered conclusion is part of the correct conclusion, in this case we may call it a defective conclusion. Part 2. Half of smaller diagram. Propositions represented. Answers are shown for diagrams problems 1 through 6. Number 7. It might be thought that the proper diagram would be, as shown, in order to express some x exist, but this is really contained in some x are y prime. To put a red counter on the division line would only tell us one of the compartments is occupied, which we know already in knowing that one is occupied in the diagram above. 8. No x are y in the diagram shown. 9. Some x are y prime in the shown diagram. 10. All x are y in the shown diagram. 11. Some x are y in the shown diagram. 12. No x are y as shown. 13. Some x are y and some are y prime as shown. 14. All x are y prime, as shown. 15. No y are x prime, as shown. 16. All y are x, as shown. 17. No y exist, as shown. 18. Some y are x prime, that is, as shown. 19. Some y exist, as shown. Part 3. Half of smaller diagram. Symbols interpreted. Number 1. No x are y prime. 2. No x exist. 3. Some x exist. 4. All x are y prime. 5. Some x are y, that is, some good riddles are hard. 6. All x are y, that is, all good riddles are hard. 7. No x exist, that is, no riddles are good. 8. No x are y, that is, no good riddles are hard. 9. Some x are y prime, that is, some lobsters are unselfish. 10. No x are y, that is, no lobsters are selfish. 11. All x are y prime, that is, all lobsters are unselfish. 12. Some x are y, and some are y prime, that is, some lobsters are selfish and some are unselfish. 13. All y prime are x prime, that is, all invalids are unhappy. 14. Some y prime exist, that is, some people are unhealthy. 15. 
Some Y prime are X and some are X prime, that is, some invalids are happy and some are unhappy. 16. No Y prime exists, that is, nobody is unhealthy. Part 4. Smaller diagram. Propositions represented as shown in problems 1 through 12. Number 13. No X prime are Y, as shown. 14. All Y prime are X prime, as shown. 15. Some Y prime exist, as shown. 16. All Y are X, and all X are Y, as shown. No X prime exists, as shown. 18. All X are Y prime, as shown. 19. No X are Y, as shown. 20. Some X prime are Y, and some are Y prime, as shown. 21. No Y exist, and some X exist, as shown. 22. All X prime are Y, and all Y prime are X, as shown. 23. Some X are Y, and some X prime are Y prime, as shown. Part 5. Smaller diagram. Symbols interpreted. 1. Some Y are not X, or some not X are Y. 2. No not X are not not Y, or no not Y are not X. 3. No not Y are X. 4. No not X exist, that is, no things are not X. 5. No Y exist, that is, no houses are two-storied. 6. Some X prime exist, that is, some houses are not built of brick. 7. No X are Y prime, or no Y prime are X, that is, no houses built of brick are other than two-storied, or no houses that are not two-storied are built of brick. 8. All X prime are Y prime, that is, all houses that are not built of brick are not two-storied. 9. Some X are Y, and some are Y prime, that is, some fat boys are active, and some are not. 10. All Y prime are X prime, that is, all lazy boys are thin. 11. All X are Y prime, and all Y prime are X, that is, all fat boys are lazy, and all lazy ones are fat. 12. All Y are X, and all X prime are Y, that is, all active boys are fat, and all thin ones are lazy. 13. No X exist, and no Y prime exist, that is, no cats have green eyes, and none have bad tempers. 14. Some X are Y prime, and some X prime are Y, or some Y are X prime, and some Y prime are X, that is, some green-eyed cats are bad-tempered, and some that have not green eyes are good-tempered, or some good-tempered cats have not green eyes, and some bad-tempered ones have green eyes. 15. Some X are Y, and no X prime are Y prime, or some Y are X, and no Y prime are X prime, that is, some green-eyed cats are good-tempered, and none that are not green-eyed are bad-tempered, or... Some good-tempered cats have green eyes, and none that are bad-tempered have not green eyes. 16. All X are Y prime, and all X prime are Y, or all Y are X prime, and all Y prime are X. That is, all green-eyed cats are bad-tempered, and all that have not green eyes are good-tempered, or all good-tempered ones have eyes that are not green, and all bad-tempered ones have green eyes. Part 6. Larger diagram, propositions represented, problems 1 through 8, as shown. Number 9, no X are M, as shown. 10, some M prime are Y, as shown. 11, all Y prime are M prime, as shown. 12, all M are X prime, as shown. 13, no X are M. That is, all Y are M, as shown. 14. All M prime are Y. That is, no X are M prime, as shown. 15. All X are M. No M are Y prime, as shown. 16. All M prime are Y prime. That is, no X are M prime, as shown. 17. All X are M. That is, all M are Y as shown, see remarks on number 7 on page 60. 18. No X prime are M, that is, no M prime are Y, as shown. 19. All M are X, that is, all M are Y, as shown. 20. 
We had better take persons as universe. We may choose myself as middle term, in which case the premises will take the form. I am a person who sent him to bring a kitten. I am a person to whom he brought a kettle by mistake. Or we may choose he as middle term, in which case the premises would take the form. He is a person whom I sent to bring me a kitten. He is a person who brought me a kettle by mistake. The latter form seems best, as the interest of the anecdote clearly depends on his stupidity, not on what happened to me. Let us then make M equal he, X equal persons whom I sent, etc., and Y equals persons who brought back, etc. Hence, all M are X, all M are Y, and the required diagram is shown. Part 7. Both Diagrams Employed Number 1. Diagram as shown, that is, all y are x prime. 2. Diagram as shown, that is, some x are y prime, or some y prime are x. 3. Diagram as shown, some y are x prime, or some x prime are y. 4. Diagram as shown, that is, no x prime are y prime, or no y prime are x prime. 5. Diagram as shown, that is, all y are x prime, that is, all black rabbits are young. 6. Diagram as shown, that is, some y are x prime, that is, some black rabbits are young. 7. Diagram as shown, that is, all x are y, or all well-fed birds are happy. 8. Diagram as shown, some x prime are y prime, or some birds that are not well-fed are unhappy, or some unhappy birds are not well fed. 9. Diagram is shown. That is, all X are Y, or John has got a toothache. 10. Diagram is shown. That is, no X prime are Y, or no one but John has got a toothache. 11. Diagram is shown. Some X are Y, that is, someone who has taken a walk feels better. 12. Diagram is shown. Some X are Y, that is, someone whom I sent to bring me a kitten brought me a kettle by mistake. 13. Diagram as shown. Let books be universe. M equal exciting. X equals that suit feverish patients. Y equals that make one drowsy. No M are X, and therefore no Y are X. All M are Y, that is... No books suit feverish patients, except such as make one drowsy. 14. Diagram as shown. Let persons be universe. M equals that deserve the fair. X equals that get their desserts. Y equals brave. Some M are X, and therefore some Y are X. No Y prime are M. That is, some brave persons get their desserts. 15. Diagram is shown. Let persons be universe. M equal patient. X equal children. Y equal that can sit still. No X are M, and therefore no X are Y. No M prime are Y. That is, no children can sit still. 16. Diagram is shown. Let things be universe. M equal fat. X equal pigs. Y equal skeletons. All X are M, and therefore all X are Y prime, no Y are M. That is, all pigs are not skeletons. 17. Diagram as shown. Let creatures be universe, M equal monkeys, X equal soldiers, Y equal mischievous. No M are X, therefore some Y are X prime, all M are Y. That is, some mischievous creatures are not soldiers. 18. Diagram is shown. Let persons be universe. M equal just. X equal my cousins. Y equal judges. No X are M, therefore no X are Y. No Y are M prime. That is, none of my cousins are judges. 19. Diagram as shown. Let periods be universe. M equal days. X equal rainy. Y equal tiresome. Some M are X. Therefore, some X are Y, all X M are Y. That is, some rainy periods are tiresome. And B. 
these are not legitimate premises, since the conclusion is really part of the second premise, so that the first premise is superfluous. This may be shown in letters thus. All XMRY contains some XMRY, which contains some XRY, or in words, all rainy days are tiresome contains some rainy days are tiresome, which contains some rainy periods are tiresome. Moreover, the first premise, besides being superfluous, is actually contained in the second, since it is equivalent to some rainy days exist, which, as we know, is implied in the proposition, all rainy days are tiresome. Altogether, a most unsatisfactory pair of premises. 20. Diagram as shown. Let things be universe, M equal medicine, X equal nasty, Y equal senna. All M are X, therefore all Y are X, all Y are M, that is, Senna is nasty. See remarks at number 7, page 60. 21. Diagram is shown. Let persons be universe, M equal Jews, X equal rich, Y equal Patagonians. Some M are X, therefore some X are Y prime, all Y are M prime. Some rich persons are not Patagonians. 22. Diagram as shown. Let creatures be universe. M equal teetotalers. X that like sugar. Y nightingales. All M are X, therefore no Y are X prime. No Y are M prime. That is, no nightingales dislike sugar. 23. Diagram as shown. Let food be universe. M equal wholesome. X equal muffins. Y equal buns. No X are M, all Y are M. There is no information for the smaller diagram, so no conclusion can be drawn. 24. Diagram as shown. Let creatures be universe. M equal that run well. X equal fat. Y equal greyhounds. No X are M, therefore some Y are X prime. Some Y are M, that is, some greyhounds are not fat. 25. Diagram as shown. Let persons be universe, M equal soldiers, X equal that to march, Y equal youths. Some M are X, some Y are M prime. There is no information for the smaller diagram, so no conclusion can be drawn. 26. Diagram as shown. Let food be universe, M equal sweet, X equal sugar, Y equal salt. All X are M, therefore all X are Y prime, all Y are M prime, all Y are X prime. That is, sugar is not salt. Salt is not sugar. 27. Diagram as shown. Let things be universe. M equal eggs, X equal hard-boiled, Y equal crackable. Some M are X, therefore some X are Y. No M are Y prime. That is, some hard-boiled things can be cracked. 28. Diagram as shown. Let persons be universe, M equal Jews, X equal that are in the house, Y equal that are in the garden. No M are X, therefore no X are Y. No M prime are Y. That is, no persons that are in the house are also in the garden. 29. Diagram as shown. Let things be universe, M equal noisy, X equal battles, Y equal that may escape notice. All X are M, therefore some X prime are Y, all M prime are Y. Some things that are not battles may escape notice. 30. Diagram as shown. Let persons be universe. M equal Jews, X equal mad, Y equal rabbis. No M are X, therefore all Y are X prime, all Y are M. That is, all rabbis are sane. 31. Diagram as shown. Let things be universe. M equal fish, X equal that can swim, Y equal skates. No M are X prime, and therefore some Y are X, some Y are M. That is, some skates can swim. 32. Diagram as shown. Let people be universe. M equal passionate, X equal reasonable, Y equal orators. All M are X prime, and therefore some Y are X prime, some Y are M. That is, some orators are unreasonable. See remarks on number 7, page 60. 
The Game of Logic by Lewis Carroll. Chapter 4. Hit or Miss. Quote, Thou canst not hit it, hit it, hit it. Thou canst not hit it, my good man. End of quote. 1. Pain is wearisome. No pain is eagerly wished for. 2. No bald person needs a hairbrush. No lizards have hair. 3. All thoughtless people do mischief. No thoughtful people forgets a promise. 4. I do not like John. Some of my friends like John. 5. No potatoes are pineapples. All pineapples are nice. 6. No pins are ambitious. No needles are pins. 7. All my friends have colds. No one can sing who has a cold. 8. All these dishes are well cooked. Some dishes are unwholesome if not well cooked. 9. No medicine is nice. Senna is a medicine. 10. Some oysters are silent. No silent creatures are amusing. 11. All wise men walk on their feet. All unwise men walk on their hands. 12. Mind your own business. This quarrel is no business of yours. 13. No bridges are made of sugar. Some bridges are picturesque. 14. No riddles interest me that can be solved. All these riddles are insoluble. 15. John is industrious. All industrious people are happy. 16. No frogs write books. Some people use ink in writing books. 17. No pokers are soft. All pillows are soft. 18. No antelope is ungraceful. Graceful animals delight the eye. 19. Some uncles are ungenerous. All merchants are generous. 20. No unhappy people chuckle. No happy people groan. 21. Audible music causes vibration in the air. An audible music is not worth paying for. 22. He gave me five pounds. I was delighted. 23. No old Jews are fat millers. All my friends are old millers. 24. Flour is good for food. Oatmeal is a kind of flour. 25. Some dreams are terrible. No lambs are terrible. 26. No rich man begs in the street. All who are not rich should keep accounts. 27. No thieves are honest. Some dishonest people are found out. 28. All wasps are unfriendly. All puppies are friendly. 29. All improbable stories are doubted. None of these stories are probable. 30. He told me you had gone away. He never says one word of truth. 31. His songs never last an hour. A song that lasts an hour is tedious. 32. No bride cakes are wholesome. Unwholesome food should be avoided. 33. No old misers are cheerful. Some old misers are thin. 34. All ducks waddle. Nothing that waddles is graceful. 35. No professors are ignorant. Some ignorant people are conceited. 36. Toothache is never pleasant. Warmth is never unpleasant. 37. Bores are terrible. You are a bore. 38. Some mountains are insurmountable. All styles can be surmounted. 39. No Frenchmen like plum pudding. All Englishmen like plum pudding. 40. No idlers win fame. Some painters are not idle. 41. No lobsters are unreasonable. No reasonable creatures expect impossibilities. 42. No kind deed is unlawful. What is lawful may be done without fear. 43. No fossils can be crossed in love. 
any oyster may be crossed in love. 44. This is beyond endurance. Well, nothing beyond endurance has ever happened to me. 45. All uneducated men are shallow. All these students are educated. 46. All my cousins are unjust. No judges are unjust. 47. No country that has been explored is infested by dragons. Unexplored countries are fascinating. 48. No misers are generous. Some old men are not generous. 49. A prudent man shuns hyenas. No banker is imprudent. 50. Some poetry is original. No original work is producible at will. 51. No misers are unselfish. None but misers save eggshells. 52. All pale people are phlegmatic. No one who is not pale looks poetical. 53. All spiders spin webs. Some creatures that do not spin webs are savage. 54. None of my cousins are just. All judges are just. 55. John is industrious. No industrious people are unhappy. 56. Umbrellas are useful on a journey. What is useless on a journey should be left behind. 57. Some pillows are soft. No pokers are soft. 58. I am old and lame. No old merchant is a lame gambler. 59. No eventful journey is ever forgotten. Uneventful journeys are not worth writing a book about. 60. Sugar is sweet. Some sweet things are liked by children. 61. Richard is out of temper. No one but Richard can ride that horse. 62. All jokes are meant to amuse. No act of Parliament is a joke. 63. I saw it in a newspaper. All newspapers tell lies. 64. No nightmare is pleasant. Unpleasant experiences are not anxiously desired. 65. Prudent travelers carry plenty of small change. Imprudent travelers lose their luggage. 66. All wasps are unfriendly. No puppies are unfriendly. 67. He called here yesterday. He is no friend of mine. 68. No quadrupeds can whistle. Some cats are quadrupeds. 69. No cooked meat is sold by butchers. No uncooked meat is served at dinner. 70. Gold is heavy. Nothing but gold will silence him. 71. Some pigs are wild. There are no pigs that are not fat. 72. No emperors are dentists. All dentists are dreaded by children. 73. All who are not old like walking. Neither you nor I are old. 74. All blades are sharp. Some grasses are blades. 75. No dictatorial person is popular. She is dictatorial. 76. Some sweet things are unwholesome. No muffins are sweet. 77. No military men write poetry. No generals are civilians. 78. Boars are dreaded. A boar is never begged to prolong his visit. 79. All owls are satisfactory. Some excuses are unsatisfactory. 80. All my cousins are unjust. All judges are just. 81. Some buns are rich. All buns are nice. 82. No medicine is nice. No pills are unmedicinal. 83. Some lessons are difficult. What is difficult needs attention. 84. No unexpected pleasure annoys me. Your visit is an unexpected pleasure. 85. 
Caterpillars are not eloquent. Jones is eloquent. 86. Some bald people wear wigs. All your children have hair. 87. All wasps are unfriendly. Unfriendly creatures are always unwelcome. 88. No bankrupts are rich. Some merchants are not bankrupts. 89. Weasels sometimes sleep. All animals sometimes sleep. 90. Ill-managed concerns are unprofitable. Railways are never ill-managed. 91. Everybody has seen a pig. Nobody admires a pig. Extract a pair of premises out of each of the following and deduce the conclusion if there is one. 92. The lion, as anyone can tell you who has been chased by them as often as I have, is a very savage animal, and there are certain individuals among them, though I will not guarantee it as a general law, who do not drink coffee. 93. It was most absurd of you to offer it. You might have known, if you had had any sense, that no old sailors ever like gruel. But I thought, as he was an uncle of yours, an uncle of mine indeed, stuff. You may call it stuff if you like. All I know is my uncles are all old men, and they like gruel like anything. Well, your uncles are. 94. Do come away. I can't stand this squeezing any more. No crowded shops are comfortable. You know very well. Well, who expects to be comfortable out shopping? Why, I do, of course, and I'm sure there are some shops further down the street that are not crowded, so... 95. They say no doctors are metaphysical organists, and that lets me into a little fact about you, you know. Why do you make that out? You never heard me play the organ. No, doctor, but I've heard you talk about Browning's poetry, and that showed me that you are metaphysical, at any rate, so... Extract a syllogism out of each of the following and test its correctness. 96. Don't talk to me. I've known more rich merchants than you have, and I can tell you not one of them was ever an old miser since the world began. And what has that got to do with old Mr. Brown? Why, isn't he very rich? Yes, of course he is. And what then? Why don't you see that it's absurd to call him a miserly merchant? Either he's not a merchant, or he is not a miser. 97. It is so kind of you to inquire. I'm really feeling a great deal better today. And is it nature or art that is to have the credit of this happy change? Art, I think. The doctor has given me some of that patent medicine of his. Well, I'll never call him a humbug again. There's somebody, at any rate, that feels better after taking his medicine. 98. No, I don't like you one bit, and I'll go and play with my doll. Dolls are never unkind. So you like a doll better than a cousin? Oh, you little silly. Of course I do. Cousins are never kind, at least no cousins I've ever seen. Well, and what does that prove, I'd like to know? If you mean that cousins aren't dolls, who ever said that they were? 99. What are you talking about geraniums for? You can't tell one flower from another at this distance. I grant you. They're all red flowers. It doesn't need a telescope to know that. Well, some geraniums are red, aren't they? I don't deny it. And what then? I suppose you'll be telling me some of those flowers are geraniums. Of course, that's what I should tell you, if you'd the sense to follow an argument. But what's the good of proving anything to you, I should like to know? 100. Boys, you've passed a fairly good examination, all things considered. Now let me give you a word of advice before I go. Remember that all who are really anxious to learn work hard. I thank you, sir, in the name of my scholars, and proud am I to think there are some of them at least that are really anxious to learn. Very glad to hear it. And how do you make it out to be so? Why, sir, I know how hard they work, some of them, that is. Who should know better? 
Extract from the following speech a series of syllogisms or arguments having the form of syllogisms and test their correctness. It is supposed to be spoken by a fond mother in answer to a friend's cautious suggestion that she is perhaps a little overdoing it in the way of lessons with her children. 101. Well, they've got their own way to make in the world. We can't leave them a fortune apiece, and money's not to be had, as you know, without money's worth. They must work if they want to live. And how are they to work if they don't know anything? Take my word for it, there's no place for ignorance in these times, and all authorities agree that the time to learn is when you're young. No one's got no memory afterwards worth speaking of. A child will learn more in an hour than a grown man in five. So those that have to learn must learn when they're young, if ever they're to learn at all. Of course, that doesn't do unless children are healthy. I quite allow that. Well, the doctor tells me no children are healthy unless they've got a good color in their cheeks. And only just look at my darlings, why their cheeks bloom like peonies. Well, now, they tell me that to keep children in health, you should never give them more than six hours altogether at lessons in the day, and at least two half-holidays in the week. And that's exactly our plan, I can assure you. We never go beyond six hours, and every Wednesday and Saturday, as ever is, not one syllable of lessons do they do after their one o'clock dinner. So how can you imagine I'm running any risk in the education of my precious pets? It's more than I can understand, I promise you. The End